Well, hello. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Stephen. So this week's blog is titled simply Blunders. Um, I kind of go through sort of a, um, an, an interesting sort of uh, linear history, for lack of a better term. Um, in the blog, I start off with kind of how I developed the love of history. And it came from going to the library when I was in fourth or fifth grade, uh, the little elementary school library, and checking out a biography on Benjamin Franklin. Um, that singular book, written for children, uh, really sort of sparked a fascination with history that's really lasted my entire life. Um, it's been one of those little accidental events that really was a transformative experience. But one of the things that I learned early on as I was studying history is that everything that we would focus on, whether it was on studying Napoleon or Alexander the Great or Abraham Lincoln, it was always based around the concept that you would study great people you know, individuals, not necessarily just males, right? I mean, from Joan of Arc to, you know, Mother Teresa, we would study these individuals. And through the studying of them, there was a degree of admiration, ultimately leading to emulation. That, that That's sort of how we became better people. Um, but it's missing something in that. There was a course that Sandy and I took that was uh, taught by Dr. Gregory Aldretti of the University of Wisconsin uh, called Great Blunders in Military History. Absolutely fascinating. And one of the reasons why he teaches the course specifically is so that we can learn not from the great successes that have happened in military adventurism, but rather from the abysmal failures that have occurred, that there is as much of an instructional value in looking at failure as there is in looking at success. We know this. I mean, we study after action reports specifically to establish lessons learned and everything like that. But when we focus on history, we tend to focus primarily on the great events or the great leaders that have produced these military victories. Um, look, going through this course was, was really illuminating because we start seeing sort of repetitive failures that have manifested throughout human history as it relates to military conquest or military defensiveness. And it usually is relegated around pure egotism the belief system that their weapon systems, their military superiority, their officer corps is somehow superior to the enemy um, and therefore giving them a massive competitive advantage. And sometimes this results in cataclysmic failure. Um, we also can see the same type of thing manifest when it comes to individual weapons training. Well, I already know all this stuff. I've been practicing for years, orthodoxy never changes, and all these other types of things, where in reality, um, this is a totally organic thing. If you look at the military doctrine that existed in 1832, people have no hesitation in realizing that that military doctrine is pretty sufficiently changed in 2022. And yet, when it comes to individual weapons training, a lot of people feel that, well, what I learned in 1990 is still absolutely consistent with the weapons manipulations and the types of, you know, modalities that we would use in 2022. And that is, in fact, not accurate. Just as in military development, things change, so do things change when it comes to individual weapons training as well. Anyways, um, I, I hope you read the blog. I hope you enjoy it. It's, uh, it's kind of fun to write. Um, in any event, I want you to train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.